Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Cobb Ilco number 861C-46-10. This is an aluminum collar in what they what Cobb calls the Dura Color Brown. Dura Color Brown. It would be um, quite compatible with dark bronze anodized aluminum storefront. Um, not so far off the mark when it comes to oil rub bronze either. But nonetheless, this is their Dash 46, which is not Dash 10B, but they're very similar. 10B is not a great match for dark bronze anodized aluminum storefront. Um, I would go with this. And naturally, if I was going with, you know, if I had oil rub bronze cylinders and trim, I wouldn't want the 46 as a first choice. I'd want the 10B. Now, this is an 861. That means that it is a cylinder collar or a trim ring. Um, not, not so much a trim ring, it's more of just a, a collar or a stacking ring. This is meant to take up the room from the face of the door or whatever you are installing the cylinder to, to the underside of the head. Um, this is the C, and the C spe specifically tells us that it's 332nd of an inch, and my caliper tells me 0 .094, so yeah, pretty close to 332nd of an inch. That's the thickness. Since we're measuring it, let's take the other dimensions just for the sake of doing so. The OD of the ring is 1.405, 1.405. The ID of the ring is 1.176, 1.176 on the ID of that ring. Now, where are you going to use this? Well, uh, where you're going to use this is um, many places. Let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Typical applications for this cylinder collar will be aluminum storefront. You have a cylinder that might be one inch in length, and you've got some room from the underside of the head to the back of the door. 332nd might be exactly what you need in that application. Um, you'll also see these used on mortise locks. When you have a mortise cylinder and you have a longer cylinder, then it actually, the application actually requires. And that goes for aluminum storefront as well, or a key switch, or whatever you're installing a mortise cylinder onto, like maybe a, an access panel, or maybe it's going to be a, you know, a, a strong box, whatever you're installing it to. Um, trim, exterior trim on an exit device, all will take mortise cylinders many times. Um, and generally, you're going to have cylinders that are just too long for the application. So if you have an inch and three quarter thick door and your lock is centered in that inch and three quarter thickness, well, that's seven eighths of an inch from either side of the door to the center. Well, you don't need a cylinder that's quite seven eighths. You can go with one that's like a sixteenth of an inch less. But regardless, you're dealing with short cylinders, seven eighths or maybe a little bit less. And they don't make a seven eighths cylinder. Um, 15 16 is really the shortest that you'll get, but that's really too much cylinder. And the reason it's that length is because you've got to fit the key in there, and they can't fit the key into a cylinder when you make it too short without literally shortening the length of the key blank. You can get three quarter inch cylinders from Kaba Ilko, but those are four pin uh, cylinder plugs, is what they are. Um, so a minimum length on a cylinder is based on what you're trying to stick into it. You know, you can't have the key eject way out past the edge of the uh, of the uh, cylinder, the broaching in the back of the cylinder plug. As a result of these fixed requirements that we're dealing with, cylinder collars, trim rings, guards, whatever you call them, um, you know, um, meaning there are proper names for all of them, uh, this would be, um, they're, they're required because you don't want to leave the underside of that head uh, or, the, or the head of the cylinder exposed. And the reason you don't is because it leaves that cylinder head susceptible to attack. An easy pipe wrench will spin that cylinder off, allowing a uh, means of bypass. When you have a collar like this installed, the reason I gave the outside dimension of the collar is it will be equal to or slightly greater than the head of the mortise cylinder or a rim cylinder. And that's by design. So if someone were to try to grab onto that cylinder and rotate it, You'll grab onto this first, and when it's installed, this will actually turn on the door. It will never be super tight um, because you're going to rotate that cylinder in to such a point where the key is vertical. 
and it will lock and unlock, you know, or properly operate whatever you're installing it to. And that's 332nd of an inch is not going to be the exact thickness based on a full revolution of that mortise cylinder, which is 32 threads per inch, by the way. Um, so that's where you're going to use this stuff. Now this is again in the 46 finish, and I'll show you the other finishes in a moment. The dash 10 in the part number simply means that when a distributor like us buys this from the factory, it's sold in a package of 10 is how it is. You can buy any quantity that you like. If you happen to order 10, it may or may not come in a sealed package, doesn't matter. Uh, but that 10 from the factory is the only way that they supply it. Shouldn't impact you at all. Let's switch to the screen view and let's look at some supporting information. Here is the item that we are looking at. Not too much to see here, but let's take a closer look at some photographs that we have published below this item. Okay, here those are. Just showing you what it looks like. A little closer up view sometimes than what you can see on a video. This shows how these are actually chamfered. A very, you know, d tough to see with the human eye, but chamfered on both sides. The first image does allude to that as well, chamfered. It's just a standard design feature of this uh, collar. Now, speaking of that, dimensional properties, there's a link to the technical drawing that's here. That's where we can uh, view um, the minutia of the technical dimensional properties of all of their um, collars. It doesn't really matter too much, but sometimes clients do ask, hey, I need to know that exact dimension. Well, there it is. This is a uh, internal Kaba Ilko document that's not uh, there's nothing, there's no reason why I don't think the general public, you know, can't see this document, um, but there it is. So it's nice to have your 861C. Now about the C, you'll note here, there is a horizontal line of navigation. So if we click on, uh, let's just click on solid, collars, mortise, cylinder, it can be a rim as well. Let's click on solid, because this is a solid collar versus one that would incorporate um, you know, a spring or a compression spring or a wave spring, a wave washer. When you drop down the results, you can see where you can refine by thickness. Okay, so we're in the 332nd of an inch. Then you can refine by finish. So that's pretty handy. Then you can get right to the item that you are working on and looking at. Okay, now below this video is a table that will show all of the other collars links to those items, links to the videos where they exist for the different sizes and finishes. Other collars are here as well, adjustable spring collars. That's nice when you've got, when you have a long cylinder that um, you need to be able to thread in and have that draw down tight. And the application that you'll see with a longer cylinder is small format interchangeable core when it's installed on aluminum storefront. Those cylinders are an inch and three eighths at a minimum. Um, and and can very, you know, can absolutely be ordered longer. Uh, but at a minimum, they'll be inch and three eighths. Well, that's way too much mortise cylinder housing for a typical aluminum storefront. You'll see that on sliding doors of a grocery store where they're using a small format keying system, but they would need to lock the doors up at night. Uh, and those cylinders always stick way off the face of the door. So collars like this are pretty common. Tapered collars are really nice because not only are they tapered, meaning it's a, a better security feature when the cylinder, just really exaggerating it, okay, oh, looks like this. So if you try that pipe wrench attack, that tool just has a tendency to scoot off of there. It's hard to bite into a tapered collar because the concept is that your mortise cylinder is sitting in here, flush with outside here. Okay, so tapered collars are nice, and the, in with these you would use the wave washer, and the wave washer uh, literally looks like. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it. I'll have to uh, remedy that. Um, and we'll by the time you're seeing this video, we'll have images of a wave washer shown, uh, so you know what they look like. Actually, let's just do a generic internet search. Here's one. That's what they look like. They are, you know, maybe three, 
sixteenths of an inch overall thickness, but when you tighten that cylinder down, that will flatten or compress, allowing you to fit or sit inside of the head of that tapered collar. Okay. Now, there's a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page. And from this manufacturer's page, you can pull up not only all of the Kaba Ilko products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation here, sorry, here, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as links to several encyclopedic documents, such as a product catalog. So this would be the uh, brass cylinder catalog that we have here, and the brass cylinder manual. Now there's contained in this document a listing of all the items that they sell. Unfortunately, the latest release isn't too strong in the graphical department. The prior catalog featured a lot more images to show people. So the problem is unless you know the um, the part number, it's going to be pretty tough to know what you're looking at. The price book from 2014 has a lot more photographs in it, making it a little bit easier that you can view. Uh, in terms of easier that you can view, the key blank catalog is here. Key blank, key blank catalog. If you know the name Kaba Ilko, you very might well so for their key blanks. 500 page document. And when we get into section two, that's all the what they call the North American cylinders. It's like the magenta or purple section. And the point, here we go. And the point of the matter is if you're looking for key blanks for door locks, this would be your section. It's all alphabetical. Uh, CCL, Corbin Cabinet uh, Lock Company. Um, Corbin, Sergeant, Ilco, Yale, everyone's in here basically. The point is, is if you're looking for a key blank, this would be, this is a tremendously helpful resource. And what makes it helpful is you're looking at a broaching profile of the cylinder plug. This is what you would see if you look down into the cylinder. If you're holding the key with your thumb on this face of it, it's not going to look like this. It will look symmetrically opposite because this is what you're putting the key into, not the key itself. This is the, bro the, the broaching profile of the cylinder plug. The point is, while you have to reverse that in your mind's eye, you can always use this document to great effect to be able to filter out clearly what the key blank cannot be. Um, and then, you know, I don't always find the key blank I need because it may not be in here to begin with, um, or I'm just, or it's a skill beyond uh, what I possess. But I can always use it to exclude what it cannot be for sure. You know, there's the, you know, if you really want to test it, you know, there's the typical quick set 1176 profile. Apparently, this company Donner, who I've never heard of, um, uses a quick set keyway. Eagle Lock, you're gonna bump into Eagle Lock if you do a search on Eagle. I think they were quite infamous for um, trunk locks, uh, mortise locks as well. Um, possibly, oh, don't quote me, I have forgotten more about some of these specialty locks. They may have made mailbox locks as well. Okay. A lot of names that go back uh, all throughout the 20th century are listed here. These would be Falcon, you can tell by the bow, that's a Falcon bow. Etc. Now, let's wrap up this video on camera. In conclusion, this is a very typical sort of item that uh, you're going to need. The 332nd is very common. They go out to about 5 eighths of an inch. Now, be mindful if you need a thickness of collar that is not within what Kaba offers, reach out to us. We can definitely make special length collars. Here's one that is inch and a sixteenth, I believe, is what this one is. So we can definitely help you uh, in that department, so feel free to uh, reach out to us. Occasionally you also stack them together if you need to in a pinch, because a custom cylinder collar like that, that's going to take that's going to take some lead time. Uh, so be mindful. Uh, I want to say thank you to the people at Kaba Ilko, especially the gentleman in cylinder tech support. He has been extremely uh, helpful and um, even irreplaceable when it comes to getting answers to you know, the world of Kaba Ilko and to him I say thank you very much. Any questions on the 861C-46 cylinder collar or any other Kaba Ilko product, please feel free to reach out to us and thank you.
Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.